need, 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 need a minute. I tell what what your uh, it takes me about five five minutes to start my life in my office. So uh, it's if it's taking a little time, don't worry. What I'll do is go ahead and first talk about this content here. You know, the response of, uh, of the first order system. And then we'll that may give you enough time to get your computer working, cooperating, and then uh, we'll do some math out here. And holler at me if you are not able to see things, all right? There's a couple of workstations, I think one up here. Are there any in the back row? One, two, three, okay, raise your hand. You've got an seat next to you. Excuse me? Hop in and uh, log in, start MATLAB, get that little MATLAB prompt. We are not going to do MATLAB programming per se in this class. MATLAB just has a few commands that are system analysis, a little bit, just some toolboxes. All right, so let's, uh, while you're working on trying to get your computer up and running, I'm going to talk a little bit about this idea of a step response. A step response means what is the response at the output? If I were to sketch this response, what is the response at the output when the input is a step? So we're going to normalize things and assume uh, things are uh, a unit step. And this is going to be the basic form uh, of a first order system. So when I say first order step response, it means the response of a system that is modeled as a first order transfer function and its input is a step. Okay, so that's what uh, these words mean. So an ex as an example of a uh, transfer function like that, let's first kind of review modeling. We talked about this the first time we got together. Uh, let's suppose that we have a voltage source, Vn like so, uh, driving a resistance with a resistance of one. We put a capacitor here, uh, 0 0.1 so and I'm interested in knowing what is the voltage at the output which is the capacitor output uh, like this so what we can do is we can do a little uh, uh, voltage division uh, to write out what is this uh, output over input and what we should do to this analysis a little bit of circuit analysis might take us maybe two three minutes we should get something like one over, this is this is the resistance, this is the capacitor. We'll get something like one over RC S plus one. And here R is equal to one, and C is equal to 0 0.1. And so the transfer function for this problem is one over 0 0.1 S plus one. So this would be an example of a simple first order process, an electrical process, um, that has <coughs> that standard form. Remember, transfer function describes output over input. So here I've specified the output as the, the voltage across the capacitor. The input is the voltage, the yeah, input here at this uh, voltage source. And it turns out to be this. So if I try to fit it to, to my standard form, my standard form is K tau S plus 1. So I compare these two side by side and I say what are K and tau. I would come to the conclusion that K is equal to 1 and tau is equal to 0 0.1. Right. So a uh, first order system is going to be characterized by these two parameters, uh, K and tau. All right. And so uh, we can use these two parameters to kind of get a quick sketch of what the system response is. And so I'm going to tell you what is K and tau. K is what we call the DC gain of the model, and tau is what we call the time constant. And if this input here, if this voltage is a, 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 as a step voltage, say it goes from zero volts to one volt at time t equal to zero, then this response is going to look, in general, something like this. This is time. It's going to look like an exponential function. 
and its final value is going to settle out here at k times the input magnitude. Okay. K is the DC gain. Gain means it has to multiply something. So what does it multiply? It multiplies the magnitude of the input. Uh, so in, in many cases, our default input is a 1. So we say this is 1. K times 1 will be the final value of this exponential function. It's assuming that the initial conditions were equal to 0. And the system is initially at rest. We'll put in a step, and we'll get this exponential response. The time constant tells us uh, how quickly the system is going to respond. And so this exponential function, if we were to do the calculus work or do the Laplace transform work, uh, we would find that we that something is going to there's a, a particular function uh, that appears in the math, and that function uh, contains a term that looks like e to the minus t over tau, and that's where the time constant comes in. And so uh, that response is characterized in time by the time constant. Uh, you may recall that uh, one way to describe the time constant is to put your pen right here and draw a tangent line to to this curve right here and, and start out. I'm going to kind of sketch it in like that. And that's that tangent line. And if I take a look and see where this line hits the final value, and I kind of see how much time does that take, this time is the time constant tau. Okay, that's the time constant. That's one way to describe the time constant. So if you have a small time constant, that means the response is more quick. If you have a large time constant, that means that the response is more gradual. Uh, another way of describing the time constant is to say that this time constant also gives me a rule of thumb uh, for how long it takes to kind of finally reach uh, the final value. Okay, well let's review a little bit of, of math. This being an exponential function, when does it when does it actually touch this dashed line? T equal to infinity. infinity. It never really touches. Okay. So the exponential function is um, is, is a convenient math uh, description, but it, it, the time it takes for the solid curve to teach, uh, reach the dash curve is infinity. That's really not a practical thing for us. Uh, we say that the response has settled out when we get close enough. And so we're going to pick some value out here. Well, we're close enough where the dashed line and the uh, solid line are close enough. And this time is got given a name. This time here, I'm going to call it capital T S. S means settling time. How long does it take for the response to settle out? This is called settling time. And a rough rule of thumb is, the rough rule of thumb is TS is approximately four times tau. Four times tau. So what you can do is ask yourself, well, why is it four? Okay, so let's talk a little bit about uh, why why selling time is equal to four tau. Selling time uh, t, or I'll call it t sub s, is equal to four tau. Why is that the case? Well, let me put in. Uh, 4 tau for t, and I'm going to get e to the minus 4 tau divided by tau. This was, this was the time. So I get e to the minus 4. Okay, so everybody got a MATLAB on? <coughs> so I have the MATLAB prompt. Let's just go ahead and use that as a calculator right now. And let's add the MATLAB prompt. To go ahead and type in exponential minus 4. When you've got a calculator, you can do that to plug in minus 4 and hit the e to the x button. Okay. And what do we get for that? Da, 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 da. And if we round that off to two digits, we get that's approximately 0 0.02. Okay, so if we want to say this is a percent, what will you call that? Um, no. 
call it two percent. Yeah, one hundred percent minus two percent is ninety-eight. Yeah, the response is ninety-eight percent of the way there. But if this error here is two percent, so we we'll call this two percent. Okay, so this settling time is called the two percent, two percent settling time. Two percent. Okay, let's do a little bit of MATLAB work just to kind of review some things. Um, we'll come back to settling time and sketching these responses a, a little bit more. But let's do some system analysis in MATLAB. <coughs> so I'm going to first sketch a block diagram and then uh, we'll as we talk about the analyzing it by hand, we'll also move along and do it uh, in MATLAB. Let me sketch. Uh, let me sketch the the model, and so I'll put it in something like. Uh, Let's give it a name. Let's call it G. This is the controller. Uh, let's call it C. And uh, this is the gain and feedback path. Let's call it F. So what we want to do is we want to uh, basically ask what is the response of this system. This is the output Y. And then uh, this is the input, the reference. Let's suppose that we put in a step input here, and we'd like to get the response out here. So we're going to do a little bit of system analysis using MATLAB tools. So what we're going to do is first describe all the different model pieces. So what I'm going to do is let me first describe the uh, process. And then describe this, and then describe this. It doesn't matter what the order is. But I just want to get it uh, described. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to say I'm going to describe G. What is G? Well, G is this thing. It's called a transfer function. So there's a command called TF. TF means transfer function. And I have to tell it the parameters of the transfer function. So this transfer function, the numerator is a 1, and the denominator is s. And so this is the, the way I describe them. It's a polynomial. It's a first order polynomial. So these are the coefficients uh, of, the, of the model. So this is the numerator, and this is the denominator. coefficients. Think of this as s to the 1 and this is s to the 0. To give you a second there to look at how g in MATLAB is describing this in my pen. If I don't have the 0 here, if I don't have the 0 here, I would just be describing a model whose numerator is 1 and whose denominator is 1. <coughs> so you hit that, uh, put that in there, hit the return button, and uh, MATLAB is going to say, oh, I know what a TF is, it's a transfer function. And it's supposed to tell you uh, that this is a, um, does it say continuous time transfer function? Okay, and most of our attention this semester is going to be on uh, assuming the world is, exists all the time, it's continuous time. We will dabble in discrete time for about a week, uh, but Right now, we're just entering in just the numerator and, numerator and denominator, and it's going to assume, oh, you're working with a continuous time model. Uh, it turns out the TF can be used to describe discrete time models as well. But we're just going to use it for continuous time. So with this <coughs> as an example, let's go ahead and also describe this, this model. Okay, so let's call it C. 
C is equal to transfer function. And let, let me let you think about what that ought to be. Now that you have an example, what should that look like? What parameters would you put in here? Again, here should go the numerator polynomial. In this case, the polynomial is just a constant. So I hope you're typing in something like this. And the denominator is just going to be um, s, that's the coefficient of s, plus 1. All right, let's take a look and see how each of these different blocks behaves. Okay, so let's take a look at individual block behavior. There's behavior of g alone, <coughs> and then also the behavior of c alone. And so what, let's take a look at let's take a look at the behaviors of g of s and of c of s alone. So what we could do is now we have these objects in MATLAB, um, and what you can do is we'll work with these objects. And there are some commands that are convenient for us. We've already talked about the step response of a first order model, and it turns out there's a command in MATLAB to do step responses of models in general. First response is not the only one, so what we can do is let's do this, just say step of G, just give me the step of G. And so this is the step response. And what should happen is that MATLAB should uh, say busy. It's going to go and check the license server to make sure you're working with a uh, not pirated version of MATLAB. You don't pirate things at all. If you want a copy of MATLAB, uh, for yourself, you can get a student edition of MATLAB. It has these toolboxes. Okay. The student edition costs about $100. Um, there are also the term? open source products out there that don't cost anything, that try to mimic some of the functionality of MATLAB. Uh, I use that at home. Okay, so. Uh, Let's take a look at the step response. And so let's think about for a moment. My input is a constant, and the model is just looking just the response of this model by itself, one over s. Let's kind of go back and think about what we covered, like maybe last week uh, or on Wednesday. Remember, what does the Laplace transform operator one over s mean in time? If I divide by s. What am I doing in time, in calculus? Integrating. Well, integrate. I'm integrating. Right, someone said integrate. So I've integrated a constant, what am I going to get? Times of if I integrate yeah. 1 dt, what do I get? Yeah. I get t, right, just a ramp. And I hope mm. what you see is you see this. Mm. Okay, so, and uh, this probably has a slope of 1. So this is just a step response. <laughs> of a, um, of G, our plant, on our rest. Okay, so is the input bounded? Is it bounded in magnitude? Yes, right, so one. Is the output bounded? No. No, so this is not a bounded input, bounded output system. So G is not stable, okay? G of S in this case is unstable. We talked last week about where how to determine whether the system is stable, we look at the denominator, and we look at the roots, and we call those the poles, and this system has a pole at s equal to zero, it is right on the imaginary axis, and so this is not a stable system response. Let's uh, do this exercise again, but let's take a look at the response of our compensator. We're going to do a step of C, the compensator. And uh, C, remember, was 10 over S plus 1. And so if I fit that to the standard form, I get, uh, standard first order form, I get that K is equal to 10 and tau is equal to 1. 
And so if I do the step response of that, I'll label this as time, I should get a response that looks like this, just this kind of rough sketch. The input is one, the gain is 10. So if you look carefully at the scale on the vertical axis, this should be settling out around 10. Is that dark enough? Everybody can see that? I think my pen is uh, starting to dry out. And the time constant is one, so the settling time roughly is around um, four time units. Okay, this is 2% settling. 2% settling. I'm within 2% of the final value at, at roughly four time units. Now you should be able to take your mouse and kind of go onto this curve and click on different values. And if you click around the, the, the time t equal to four value, I hope that they calculate that this is within 98% uh, of 10, which is 9.8. So it should be in that in that vicinity. Okay. Now there are some other selling times. Uh, this is uh, selling time. This is four tiles. Okay, four tiles. If you're satisfied within uh, five percent. You can go to three tau. Okay. Plug in e to the minus three into your calculator. You see that it rounds off to roughly five percent. Okay. Plus or minus five percent. That sounds pretty reasonable, right? But your elevator floor probably needs to be closer to the final floor where you want to go closer than five percent. A five percent error uh, for a ten foot story building. I mean, yeah, story is probably more than you're willing to tolerate people fly trips getting in and out of it. Uh, you might be saying, well, 1% not enough. I want to get within 1% settling. 1% settling is five time constants. Okay, so the, the common numbers are three time constants, four time constants, five. And so the settling times are one, two, and uh, 5%. Most textbooks are probably going to say, this is the one that we're going to use. Okay, 2% is pretty close, 4 is a nice even number, we like even numbers more than odd numbers. You know, so nothing sacred, but that's just the way we think humanly. Alright, any questions about the stuff command? Alright, now what we want to do is, uh, let's analyze now, we'll start analyzing this model. We've looked at the response of this alone, it's not stable. We looked at the response of this, it appears to be stable. Now we want to start looking at the response of the system as a whole. And so one of the things that we want to do is let's first uh, combine uh, this. Okay, let's take a look at C, G of S. C, G of S is going to be the product of these two things. And so if I do it by hand, I say it's 10 over S, S plus 1. That's how I do it by hand. Okay, remember block diagram algebra? If I draw two blocks, two boxes like this, two blocks like this, it means I take our models and I multiply them together. I multiply the models. So I multiply the models together. You may recall in linear systems, we, we don't, if you're doing it in time, you can't use multiplication, you have to do convulsions. Convolution <coughs> integral. Does it cause me to convulse? It sure does make me convulse. I don't like to do convolution animals. It's so weird. It's not about flipping a signal, shifting it sideways, multiplying it. I just, I don't, I don't want to do convolution integrals. I want to do something easier. I do algebra. So I work in the transform domain. I multiply the models. Okay, so what you can do is now that we have to these objects, uh, you could just multiply them. You can say, I want to create an object called CG, and I can do C times G. Go ahead and do that and see what you get. Now there's a command that will do this for you as well, which is a, it will, for this simple problem, you won't see much difference. You won't see any difference. But you can say, <coughs> Look, this is a series combination of C and G. So I can do a series combination of C and G. So 
for finding tripotheries, and you probably see that there's no difference. So you say, why do I need series command? Why, why can't I just go C times G? And well, we all know that sometimes when we multiply things together, multiply things like this together, you may run into situations where things in the numerator and things in the denominator cancel each other out and, and simplify things and do algebra like that. So if you do this command, this is just a plain algebra, this is just multiplying things together. <coughs> series tries to clean things up a little bit and try to eliminate things like cancellations between the numerator and the denominator. In this particular example, there are, there are no cancellations between anything in the top and anything in the bottom, and so it'll come out uh, being equivalent to doing this. But the series command is basically recognizing that these two are a series combination. Okay, so we should, when you use either of these commands, see something that looks like this. All right? Any questions? All right, we're going to continue on. We're going to now try to find the, the model of this feedback system. So we want to see how this feedback system uh, behaves. So let's review something from last week uh, about a feedback system model. Let's find the feedback system model. A lot of times we call this the closed loop model. We call it a closed loop model. So we want to find y <coughs> over r. We want to find what is this, this expression for y over r. And what we want to take away out of this class, at a minimum, is the, the concept that of a, a feedback system and a model, and that is the forward gain. It is the forward gain from r to y divided by 1 minus the loop gain. And so let's do it by hand once, and then we'll, I'll show you how we do it in that lab. So by hand, the forward gain is going to be uh, c times g of s divided by 1 minus Let's take a look at everything in the loop. I'm going to bring back the block diagram. Here's the block diagram. I have everything in the loop. I got a C, a G, and an F, and a minus sign. And so what needs to go into my equation is minus uh, C times G times F, all of that multiplied together like this. And so <clears throat> let's put in everything. C is 10 over S plus 1. G is 1 over S. And in the bottom, I'm going to have 1. The minus and the minus cancel each other. I get a plus. C is 10 over S plus 1. G is 1 over S. And F is 2. And all that has to be cleaned up. All that has to be cleaned up. Now, let me show you how we do this in MATLAB. Okay, so I'll, let me let you do the algebra in your lunch break. Clean up the algebra. Let's show you how we do this in MATLAB. This is a very common need that is to analyze, come up with a model of a closed loop, a feedback system. And so in MATLAB, Do. Here's the prompt. Let's give this transfer function y over r a name. Let's call it y o r. Y over r. Uh, you, you might come up with a better name. Y over r. Y over r. This is what I'm trying to calculate. That's about as creative as I can get. Y over r. It's a feedback system model. So there's a command called feedback. F E E D B A C K. E D A C K. Let's squeeze that C in there. Now, what we're going to put in here is we're going to put in the forward gain in here, a model of the forward gain. And then back here, we're going to put in a model of the feedback gain. Okay. 
So in our case here, we would type in y over r is equal to feedback. The forward gain is the gain from y to r. Let's take a look at this block diagram. It's the gain from here to here, and it's c and g, the combination of c and g. So it's just c, g, however we calculated it before. We could have had c times g, we could have had uh, series of c comma g. Um, you can, uh, those of us who work with MATLAB any at all know that we can embed commands within commands. And so you could type in the word series, c comma g, or say c times g. Uh, that's okay. You could put in transfer function of c times uh, tf of c and tf g. You can put all that in there. You can do combinations of commands as well. So the feedback gain in this case is, let's take a look at the block diagram. That's the gain of this path. And they're going to assume that I've drawn a block diagram whose plus and minus signs are this way. And so the feedback gain here is just equal to 2. So I, what I'm going to do is I'm going to fold this and just show this command and then let you compare it to how you do it by hand. Okay, the upper part is doing it by hand. The theory says it's forward gain divided by 1 minus the loop gain. So the important things to get are the forward gain and the loop gain. We have to get that correct. And then we put in these things and then do all this algebra by hand. On a computer, it says I need to know what is the forward gain and I need to know what is the feedback gain. This idea of loop gain is not in the feedback command. We don't need it. They don't want you to even have to do that much algebra. It just said, look, just tell me what's going forward and tell me what's going back. And it calculates that. And I hope, uh, let's see, I'm going to guess, I think it's going to look like, uh, I think the answer is 10 over. That's the feedback system model. Right? And if you wanted to get the response of this system, let's do that. Let's do a step response of y over r. Now this is not a first order model. This is a second order model. We'll talk about a second order model on uh, Monday, so it must be Wednesday before we talk about the second order model. Uh, but the response should look something like this. This is in time. Uh, it's going to settle out at about 0 0.5, and it should look something like this, I think. This is second order. We won't, we won't dive into that today. Okay, so what are the takeaways today? We did a little bit of uh, work in MATLAB. Um, and just introduce some of the commands that are useful the system analysis in MATLAB uh, there was a command called TF this is the transfer function um, there's a series that basically multiplies together okay, it multiplies models together uh, we did a feedback. It calculates a closed loop model. And then we look at a step response. Step response. And then uh, as far as system theory goes, uh, we looked uh, today at a first order standard model, k over tau s plus 1. And we said, how do this k and t, k and t, tau relate to 
the uh, behavior of the system. Okay, so in the time we remain, let me do a few more examples of first order models. These are other first order examples. So other first order examples, we won't need MATLAB now, so if you want to log out, uh, feel free to do that. Maybe that would be helpful so that we don't suck up all the MATLAB licenses and, and upset some graduate students who are always trying to do simulations and because we sucked up 50 of the few hundred licenses that we had in college. I don't actually don't know how many licenses we have. But I do know that we have a limited number of them because there have been times when I would try to get on and use MATLAB and I couldn't do anything and somebody said, oh, some graduate students got seven licenses running at the same time and doing some sort of tough problem. So. Okay, let's do a few other examples. Let's, uh, let's call this one uh, our second example, G2 of S. Real over S plus two. <laughs> Three over S plus two. <coughs> Three over S plus two, it turns out that the equivalent K is equal to three over two. And the time constant is equal to one half. So you've got to do a little bit of algebra. What algebra would you suggest I could do to get this in a standard form? Got a suggestion. Divide the top and bottom by two. Okay, divide top and bottom by two. Okay. Three over two. Zero point five s plus one. That looks like standard form. Now some some tidbits. Uh, K is the DC gain. DC. Okay, what is the frequency of DC? How much frequency does DC have? Zero. Okay, S is the frequency domain. So one quick way to get the DC gain is let S go to zero. And there's your three over two. Remember, it's the DC gain. Uh, this system, if I take a look at this denominator, the pole is at S equal to negative two. Okay, of course, the root of this denominator is s to the negative 2. And so if I were to sketch it in the s plane, where this is the real axis and this is the imaginary axis, then I would say there's a pole on my x bar. The pole is at minus 2. And you see this number is related to this number. Okay? This number is equal to minus 1 over tau. Three of S. Yes. And we want to find the two parameters, K and Tau. K is the DC gain. DC means zero frequency. It means S is equal to zero. So a quick way to do it without having to do the algebra is just cover all the S's. And so the DC gain is five over two. And the time constant here is, we'll do a little bit of algebra in our heads, but the time constant in this case is equal to I think. You divide top and bottom by 2, we do the algebra, it's 5 over 2 divided by 4 over 2 s plus 1. This is the gain k, and this is the time constant 2. So a step response. Gets the step response. This will settle out at k times the input. And 
the settling time here is approximately four tau. Okay, so those are, that's the takeaways we want to have for first order. First order is by far the simplest thing to analyze. Uh, Wednesday, we'll take a look at second order. Uh, what, do you, what time do you have on your watches? 9.43. 9.43? Okay. I'm satisfied with today. Anybody have any questions, concerns? I have to answer any questions in the time remaining. Otherwise, I'm going to say, see you Wednesday.